Hi folks, how you doing? I uh, thought I'd bring this piece of flint along with me and go live for a little while. As you can see, it's a beautiful quality piece of stone. And I haven't been live on um, YouTube for a long, long time. And so I thought I'd just switch the old camera on Sunday afternoon. You might be eating your tea, Sunday dinner. And uh, we'll explore what we can do with this. So as you can see, it's got a few problems. Well, the only problem is, hello Gary, how you doing? The only problem is, is all them lumps have got to come off. And we're probably gonna try and take, hello Spike, the flint from this side of the rock. What I could do in the very first place is make use of this look. Because that's a nice soft area and we could get a nice, it's soft in its shape, so we could actually try and extract a flake off of here that we can make a nice arrowhead with. So what we're gonna do is, as well as just trying to get a dagger out of this, we can think about other tools that will come along the way, because it's such a nice piece of flint. So, I'm gonna lower the camera down a bit and we shall get started. You never know whether things are going to go right or wrong. It doesn't actually matter. So far it's not going very well because I've just been crushing the edge. But we're starting to get a shape just here, look. And if we abrade that now, that'll make that edge stronger. And then we can turn it over and give that a smack with a nice bit of red song. Gary is absolutely glorious here. I'm sitting down at my earth lodge and if you haven't heard it already yet, there'll be a cuckoo start singing in a minute. That's a nice flake, right? Oops. <laughs> So we'll be able to use that to make something. And um, I could even go next door and take another one. You're probably wondering how I know there's gonna be a cuckoo start singing in a minute. It's um, cause he's, he's always singing. <laughs> he turned up a few weeks ago. See, so like that one as well. That's a keeper. So, now we've taken a few things off of that face, what we're going to start doing is we're going to start thinking about what constitutes to being problems on this side. And because it's so wide, I can use, possibly, use a bit of the width to think about taking this whole, whole thing off. Also, I could think, I'm still making my mind up because I've only just started thinking about it. I could think about setting up a platform from this end and taking that whole thing off in one go. That's a bit of a tall order, but I'm gonna go for it. This might be the shortest video ever on account of, if you get it wrong, you can get such a thing called end shock which basically means you snap the whole piece of flint in half. Okay, that was handy. See that? That whole, where I've been shooting down there, so that flake that I sent there, it didn't come off at first, but now it has come off. What that means is I can turn that over, look, and I've got access directly onto this. Okay, so we lost a little bit of length and that didn't go as well as I'd like it to. But still, whoops, clumsiness won't help. I've still got loads of room to get the job done.
Okay. So like I said, that was a tall order. And it's taken stuff out, but it hasn't given me what I'm looking for yet. So I'm going to come from the other side and see if I can get under there. What did you do this afternoon? I watched um, Will Lord Wreck a Rock. <laughs> right. And with certain rocks, you get a lot more room to set things up. On this, I've hardly got any room. So, that helped. Where's the cuckoo? It's probably me. You're probably thinking the guy's gone cuckoo. Ah! Well, there we go. That's screwed that up, isn't it? <laughs> but can you still get a dagger? Well, you can, but basically, I got denied the dagger because um, the shapes didn't go to tune for me. Anyway, let's just uh, think, think out loud. See this bit? Well, this one is part of that stone. It's a bigger piece. And what I was doing with this is I was enjoying this for this blade core corridor. Because you're basically just able to keep choosing flakes as you go around. But it's a dagger that we're after. And so I think what I'll do, I'll explore and see if I can get from this what I was intending to get from the other one. See if I get on any, any better. That's interesting for you to see. Look, see at the end of that flake. This rock has been hit quite a few times by maybe I don't know. Somebody might have been whacking it with a sledgehammer. But it's left a great big round cone there, there. That's called a Hertzian cone. And that's the shape of the shock wave that you get when you hit a piece of flint. And um, so consequently, when I'm napping, I'm actually thinking of that. So I don't actually shoot in a direction that I want the flakes to come off because there's a 30 degree sort of movement. Go on, get off. That's handy. Now we're turning that over. And you can see that the stability of this rock is on this side. So I need to try and get all this side off of it. Because that's the bit that's got all the running cracks and bit, various things going on. So that's the top of that Hertzian cone, look. Because I'm concentrating so much, I might not see all your comments. But feel free to talk amongst yourselves. And if anyone has got a question that somebody else will keep that one. That's a nice flake. Has got a question that someone else might know, know the answer to. You're very welcome to uh, speak on my behalf. See, we're moving across this one so far. You see that little crack that's running there? I don't know if you can. But I've got to get above that, because otherwise that's going to be a crack inside the stone. So at this, at this point, this is all, all this is about is it's getting control. Because before you have any sort of grand ideas, you've got to get control of the rock. And that means having access into the stone from all the way around.
and I'm driving my way back across the rock that way. Taking all these useful bits off as I go. Some of you might be wondering where I got this bit of flint. Well, interestingly enough, I was driving down the road and I see it on the side of the road um, being used as a stone to stop people driving on somebody's curb. So I went and knocked on their door and asked them if I could have that particular piece of flint and replace it with another piece because I could see that the stone that I was looking at was really nice quality and uh, I think they were more bemused by it than anything that somebody wanted the rock off their drive and um, but they let me have it along with a few others it came from an area where really good flint is likely to occur the trouble is is the flint is locked down into the ground um, that's a bit of a problem to me so I'm just going to try and get above that that helped and this is a problem this square edge but it's it's only a problem if you don't really know how to deal with them so I don't hit between them lines I actually go up onto these flat surfaces and then knock small bits of it off And I'm using a hard, smooth piece of quartzite as, a, as my hammer. And then I've got more granular stones like that. Because there'll come a point in time where we move from that technique and go over to the soft hammer. You see that? The soft hammer is going to send lo a lot longer thinner shards and then what I was doing was just tidying that area and the nice thing about the soft hammer once you start using that is you're not using up so much circumference of the flint and you're not running out of flint so quick right so well, even though we're going, going to go through that, you don't have to go through it in too much of a hurry. What you do is you plan your way into these things. And I did see your comment, Mark. It makes me happy to see it coming off as well. And when you get a really nice piece of flint, it um, is an absolute joy to work. And this, believe you me, is a nice bit of stone. Sometimes you've got to hit it and mean it because you know that you're asking for something quite big. So one of the things that one of the reasons I don't put too many posts out on, on this platform is the way kind of YouTube works and it involves quite a lot of time to make a movie um, and so therefore you know I'm more likely to post on here when I've planned and thought a movie through I've got something that I really want to say. But if you do or don't know, um, I spend a lot of more of my social media time providing content to a Facebook page that I've got. And um, literally, I'm definitely there once a week, but if not, um, but m moreover, more than that, you know, there's a lot of news about what's going on in my life incidental pictures and I understand if you're not Facebook users 
the reason I'm telling you is because you want if if you want to know more about what's going on in my life, that's where it's all going to be getting told. So I'm running into this. I still haven't won the day on this little area. I'm just trying to get the better of this situation, but it's right in the middle of the rock. It's um, I don't have much access from either side to it. And I've still got this side to deal with as well, which is potentially the same as that. So um, what we're gonna do is gonna move away from it. Then I'm gonna come back into it and I'm gonna barge in from the side. It's a sneaky little trick. go head first at it it knows well not that it knows that's a really bad strategy but actually sneaking in from the side I can usually undo its ability to defend itself so that might have just given me what I'm looking for so yeah, we now come across the top of him It's that shape in here that's stopping me getting through. Little tiny shape in the back. And I might have just won the day on that bit. Yep. So I'll leave that section there for the minute and we'll start looking around getting through this side. And every time I use this little rock, all I'm doing is I'm just making the edge maybe a little bit steeper, consolidating it so all these little flakes can then be launched off. Anyway, thanks for dropping in to my unannounced live. I hope you're... Um, finding it in, enjoyable to watch. You can see that not everything goes perfectly. It's gaining control over these shapes. little number in it the whole idea of going live to make a dagger is a uh, pretty dumb because likelihood of it working is a sort of 50 50 really <laughs> I just did see a comment. Yeah, natural pathways. I haven't been there for a long time, Damien. But I missed the comment, the last one that came up beforehand. We're slowly getting through it, aren't we? I've caused quite a bit of crushing here, which is 
in some respects is a danger. So let's see if I can clear some of that. You see certain things, they are not the simplest. Turn it back. Flint napping quite often winds pheasants up because they think some pheasant has got a point, point to prove. And uh, it's all this sort of a really angry pheasant coming out of the bush wondering what the hell's making all that racket. All this crushing here, that's a problem to me. So I'm going to try and get that cleaned off. That's helpful. And now I should be able to respond and return and get over this hump. And then, there's the cuckoo. Such a beautiful sound to be joined by. Cool, last little bit, look. See that? That's what we're after. I had the tiniest little bit I needed out of there and no room to get in there but I've just I was lucky enough to just clip that right in the right place. Right, see how hard it is, can't you? Hopefully get through there. That doesn't look like a very substantial platform to me. Sometimes when you look at things, if you can't believe in them because they don't look right, you're normally pretty right about it. Now, it would be fair to say that we already have a dagger, but what we've actually done is we've controlled an irregular shape and we've brought it into a situation where now what we have to do is balance these final little flakes and then actually th thin the whole thing out by relaying a load of new flakes across the surface. And that in its very self is probably a well over an hour's work. So what I'm quickly gonna do for the value of the time that you've already spent here and not take you too far into your day is just quickly show you where we are. That's my banquet table. 
which I've just recently put some stuff on called Miss Canvas, which is something that they use for game cover. And here's my earth lodge. And I should have a smoky fire going on in there. It's not that smoky actually, it needs to be smoky because um, I've just taken this out of brine and um, I'm hamming this. This was, a, I had a banquet a few weeks ago and um, the, uh, the pig was too long to get onto the uh, spit roast. So I decided I'd take his back leg off and ham it. Well, this is where I'm, this is where I live basically nowadays. I spend all my time here and uh, <laughs> I love it. I appreciate somebody just saying wow, because that's what I do when I come in here as well. So over here, these are some of the arrowheads I've been working on recently. Um, different types of flint. Um, red ochre from the Great Orm. Um, some of the daggers. This is my latest dagger. And when I was using um, the mist canvas for the roof, I realised that this material could actually be quite good fun to play with. So I made that little sheaf for that little knife. And that's made up of R Russian, Russian um, silver birch bark, pine pitch and miscanthus. So it was just an experiment, really. And then there's, uh, well, I could, key, I could walk you around in here for hours, actually. But we've got things like obsidian, daggers. And um, this little man-eater. This um, Bengal tiger that was swallowing people up back in the beginning of the 19th century. And all these skulls, they're not actual skulls, they're reproductions. They're reproductions of the journey of um, mankind, if you like. And then I've got things like Venus Wollendorf that I made. She was something that was found, and she's 40,000 years old. And I have all sorts of things like um, woolly mammoth teeth and tusk. A load of genuine tools over here. And so, so this is um, a sofa bed. And uh, I use some modern components because obviously I've got a really nice cool box there from Petromax, along with a big old fire bridge for a lot of cooking. Hole in the roof. <laughs> and um, a pretty awesome landscape. <coughs> Need that. And then... Um, the courses... Yeah, run courses, you can find my website. Uh, just type in Will Lord and um, Google will find me for you. I'm in Suffolk in the UK. And um, all my courses are listed on there. However, most of this year's are full up. That's me, uh, that's my proper, that is a proper shit house, that. You know. <laughs> that's my shed where I keep all of the bits and pieces I need. And then I've got a fantastic bit of wilderness. Um, I've got about 30 odd acres to play with here. Um, in here I built another earth lodge, look. But this one, the top's missing. And the reason the top's missing is because it, it was an idea that I had to make a shelter that people could actually um, come and camp in when they're on the courses. And the idea is, is instead of putting a tent up, you sleep in here, look. So you sleep under these wings. And that's your night sky. And your, and your morning dawn chorus. Which, um, 
kind of makes me happy. Yep. So, <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd hit the live because I feel sorry for the fact that um, I hardly ever put content onto YouTube. Um, and I thought, well, I'd like to uh, acquaint myself a little bit with some of you guys, let you know what I'm up to and uh, give you a little window into my world. So what can I say? Thank you for coming in and watching and um, I'll catch you again. I'll uh, probably do another episode on that, on that dagger and get that finished up and show you that as soon as I can. Take care, guys.